on her jobs. My practice is heading for job number 400. And I've already got, uh, I've already got that number booked by client number two though. That is a long story. Are we ready for another 400? What inspires me to carry on with what I'm doing? I'm going to tell you my story tonight. Who and what influenced and inspired me? I'm also going to show you some of my latest work, not the early work, but the actually more the Stellenbosch work, and how this affected my designs over the years. If you Google corkscrew, you get 5.5 million results. If you Google architect, you get 507 million results. This is the world we're living in. How do you stay inspired in the world? Instant global information and disinformation. Visual pollution, cars and robots. Electric pylons and billboards telling us what to do. It's a bit difficult to translate that one, so maybe you just ask your neighbor if you don't understand that. One of our very clever developers in town told me once, he doesn't need an architect. I just slap a bit of architecture at the entrance and I'm, I've got a good shot in Sydney. Maybe slap a bit of Frank Geary at the Woolworths entrance. <laughs> and this is what Frank Geary's got to say. I grew up under a sky like this. On one of the corners of the Millie Triangle, we were taught. Green and beautiful in summer. Dry and very cold in winter. Ermelo in the then Eastern Transvaal. It is here that the core of my inspiration originated from. Why ever changing skies and landscapes, dotted with blue gum trees, hugging the farm homestead, homesteads, honest buildings, crude in, the, in their simplicity and functionality. Built by only available materials, corrugated iron, brick and stone, blue gum poles as structure for the roofs, and here and there a loose stone mat sheep crawl on the side. And then my brother in Denver called or sent me this because I didn't have a picture of the house that we grew up in. And then I saw this and said, shh, I'm a vintage model. <laughs> Look at that. I grew up in this house in Pitt Street on the side of, 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 of the town. My grandfather stayed with us. He was a carpenter by trade and an artist. And that dove coot at the back, he had racing pigeons. That was his. And later on, when he didn't use it anymore, that became my studio. <laughs> my mom was one of the broad tummies in the door, doing gardens and forever rearranging the furniture in the house. Now I'm actually married to one as well. <laughs> My dad was actually a very creative person. And I only I only realized this now. You know, going through this and you, you, you go forward and backward and you, 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 and you assess and you see, my goodness. The only houses that we lived in, my dad designed and built. This is a 60s house. Not my obvious style or whatever you know, it's, but for a 60s house. It, it had a sunken lounge. The clear story windows bringing the, the, the northern sun in 
something large in a double volume with a dining room floating over this space. And that, those dormer windows are actually the northern light of the dining room and the kitchen. And then to link this dining room up there to the entrance level to the, and the sunken down to the bottom, there was this staircase. So, you know, and I only realized it now. Um, so I've been unknowingly aware, I've been aware of spaces and the effect it has on the, on the daily lives of us, you know, since, since a young age. Then something happened that made me realize that we have to look after our own buildings, the groups, areas, and look carefully at that picture. On the right hand side, you see the bulldozer and waiting, like a rhinoceros or yeah. And that is our Dunka shop. That's where we bought our bicycles. And the whole row in the street, that's where we went to our dear car. My mom bought all the lot and uh, for the, yeah, we grew up there. And Franken's and all, you know, and the picture at the bottom, then, and then there was nothing. In the door of Danka standing there, confronted with losing everything. Proud man. Very sad part of our history. In my naivety, as a 20 year old, we didn't have social media or anything, you know, I'm not a funky Danka, I don't know. All I could do was to capture that on, on my camera, and I did a few of these. Protest watercolors, if you wish. I'm always asked, where will I build the architectural monument to leave behind? My monument is standing in Pamela, the centennial monument unveiled by the state president. This is my first ever design of the house, 1978 first year project of first year. Where do you get the inspiration from and the courage from to carry on for the next seven years? Because obviously it didn't go well with all those marks and things that's happening there. <laughs> and that brings me to the people that inspire me through the years. And, my, you know, and that starts with my co-students and friends. We had a job. My first years at Tuckies in Pretoria, Gus Gannica taught me to design out of the box. That's the man at the top there. I completed my studies at the University of Natal in Durban, and there Professor Barry Beerman taught me to design in the box. He also sent me on a Jeffrey Lassius Travel scholarship, allowing me to immerse myself in architecture for a whole year all over the world. I ended up in the Venice, yeah, now I'm getting more emotional. I ended up in the Venice, not far from Venice, where I studied the lot all the ladies with us. The proportion, the detail, the relationship to the surroundings. All of this taught me the importance of analyzing and logging everything you see. And those are, that's the rotunda, and I think that's Villa, Isani, or I got a map and, and, and all the, all the um, villas was there on there, and I had, a, I had a 2CV there, and I went to all of them and I had a wonderful, wonderful time. For my midlife crisis, I did a master class in Australia with Glenn Murkett the Pritzker Laureate architect, and he taught me how to really look at things and to translate it into designs. An experience during that time of my life that I will never forget. Architects closer to home and influence inspired me, Michael Sutton, our first modernist, I would say, 
we're looking at Johannesburg, we've got, you know, it, 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 those were wonderful spaces. He's, he's got the same way as his wife, working with light and, and playing um, wall planes and uh, fantastic stuff. And then, Honest Mayor, his dedication and the relentless teaching of our old buildings is, a, is an inspiration for me. Carl B. Fagan, the father of South Africa, the Manhattan Architect. And then you are back and come now, our partner in Johannesburg. He, he is one of the best designers I know. And then Achilles Postelelis is also my old partner. And he taught me to be a gentleman of the year. And there's nothing better to experience and to get inspiration from than to visit one of these works or works of our great masters. The way the space is taught to you, the acoustics, the way the light is used to make the building sing. Then you have to digest and make sense of all this. I'm designing little houses all over and then that we get from this. <laughs> the brutality and the lack of sympathy of these me, me, me buildings and the influence it has on our architects. Joe, what is it? Maybe I'm just a little bit old fashioned. The work on top is Lady Zahardi. On the left, a very sympathetic renovation and reuse of an old historic building. <laughs> On the right, these whales swallowing theatre goers. <laughs> then this man here with a slope on the recycling plant and the Emmentaler cheese clothes peg office block calls his practice big. And he doesn't be up at the 2.8 billion Google results he gets. Leave on the left. That plays havoc with your emotions. I don't know if any one of you has been into the Berlin Jewish Museum. It is an unbelievable experience. And then also here, it's got a funny way of working with our old buildings. And on the right is the Metal Finger Man. It takes a very special person to put work like this out there with absolutely no respect for anything around you. <laughs> this is the best building ever built, according to me. It's designed, was designed by an Italian architect in 1975 for the founder of Edgar City Press, a boy from Namakwale, on his farm near Lyonburg, Mpumalamba. The client's brief was to build me a farmhouse on my farm, but I don't want to see it. All the materials used must be from the farm. It was designed with a series of tapered stone walls and landscape roofs. These parallel stone walls create spectacular inside and outside spaces, also framing the views over the farm. Poplar planks were sourced and prepared on the farm for floors, doors, windows, ceilings, and all the cabinetry. Patrick Watson, as a very young man, did the gardens there. He actually took us there one day because no one wanted this place and it was going, it, it was in absolute um, uh, 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 disrepair and terrible. Terrible condition. That, that the previous point is when I need inspiration, I always go back to that building. The spirit of buildings like these form, form, the, form the backbone of all my designs. Their crude honesty speaks to me and inspires me. I have refined their simple technology and details over the years. 
Merkit like delicate edges and uncomplicated functional and logical spaces. I use corrugated sheeting in nearly all my life. I saw stone from the side where it was. I'm refining the old stoops, taking the, stalk, uh, taking the supports away and allowing the stoop to become the building. The building at the bottom is also one of those buildings that I always go back to. Very early on I decided, we got a little section in Bogtown UG1, I think, when I was such a wonderful student. Um, a section, just a section, a roof, a truss, a wall plate, a da -da -da -da. and that has been, all my buildings actually look like that. The way that when I was treated, that, that building is still very nice. Just the proportion and the roof and the simplicity of it. I saw it years ago and it just talked to me. And you'll see it as we go through the work, where, where, where it comes from. On the water bed, on the end two at the height of the turnoff, is this corrugated A bar. It was the inspiration of my studio at home. From there, the rest of our farmhouse developed. Four corrugated clad stone plinth barns carefully placed on a parallel grid, overlaid with a view grid using these lines to sculpt openings to capture all the fantastic um, mountain views around Stellenbosch. Without our clients' dreams, we will not be able to create. That was taken in the middle of Namibia on a first site meeting to go and inspect the site. This game lodge responds to the vast red landscape by giving shelter and sun protection with its thick thermal walls plastered with red surrounding soil and capped with a folded paper jet like roof structure, again in corrugated sheeting, ready to take off at any time. A happy holiday. Dream of two varsity cows and their families. They sent me this picture of Christmas night. But my brief was to capture these uninterrupted sea views on the most southern tip of Africa. I was also not to spoil these, this their view of the mountain behind. This is a gallus and that is the mountain behind. And that photo was taken after we completed the buildings. You can hardly see them. And that's how we do it. Two, two low slung limestone wind protected courtyard houses nestling on the hilltop. The low wave like roofs taking the shape of the waves blending in with the horizon. So it's a series of roofs hugging, hugging the horizon, taking the shape of, of, of the soil it's standing on. And it's just now waiting for the sun felt fables to heal the construction wounds. And that is not bad for the sketch plans by the gave the client and what actually happened at the end of the day. <laughs> a holiday out in Sedgefield, floating over the multiple mul dune vegetation. We have only built on the disturbed areas of the site. The neighbor just pushed all his soil right onto the property and that we used to enter the site and get to the garage in. And then across the first dune, not not uh, damaging all the milk woods we, this this uh, building is traveling and straddling the dew on, 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 on with the sea on the one side and the um, Mountains on the other 
The interior is clad with timber, reminiscent of the forest cabin found in the area. Down on the Brayton Bay, we are busy with these holiday cabins. Timber structures touching the earth like this, as Mr. Murphy would say. The cabins are carefully placed under ancient oakwood trees. The site used to be the old caravan park, so the trees were there to grow and it created this unbelievable site. So we've, we've placed We've placed uh, cottages and we have not, not one tree we need, we need to cut down. And then obviously it opens up to that magical dreamy lagoon on the side. On the other coast, this is a part of Nostra Beach House. Exploring my fascination in pinch spaces, condensing or exploding views. To look at the plan, um, I've got a very fancy thing that no car for me. Where is it now? <laughs> at the China shop. Let me see. Who back in the okay. The sea is here. And that is the stand, it's got this funny shaped stand, so it's these squashed wedges that, and that would be what they would want to do a guest house here in time. So we've only built this one now, and then the next one will come, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. All fighting for that sea view, but that is just phase one at the moment, and we are nearly finished with that one. That is just the views from the sea and just how it opens that funneling effect and it opens up on a, on a stoop right on the sea and those, those, those waves actually feel as though they're going to come into the, into the space. The Grunos. In Pretoria, I was asked to build a very visible office building on a very visible, difficult, small, triangular property. The client planted some stinky trees years ago, and I, I am not allowed to touch it, was not allowed to touch it. I don't believe in look at me architecture, so I had a problem. I hide the buildings with a planted tennis court fence. Two red brick office blocks encased in a four meter height, triangle shaped green hedge. Not only, the, uh, not only hiding the building, but also acts as a sun protection a screen. The hedge is pierced by, by the blocks to allow some outside contact, and the spaces between the buildings. And, and the hedge forms these interesting outdoor spaces and what I'm going to see on the next photo now the National Sport Bride you can also do in one of those spaces um, so that is waiting for the, for the planting to, 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 to cover those the, 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 the fence the northern part of this small stand has got this curved gabion wall and that's part of the city stormwater network so we've just extended the gabion and that forms the basis of this of the building top of this green wall if you look here 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 yeah, yeah. that is the bride <laughs> the red house this is a very old project of mine and it actually illustrates what I told you in the beginning. There's that little, and there they are. There's that, and there they are. So it's on the Bow River, that, this, that is the soil color. The, the walls were plastered with the soil of, of, of the stand. And it's a study of, 
of those standard farm shed steel things that they advertise on the back of the, the Farmers Weekly. So it's a series of them um, arranged to get some privacy and to look at the water as well. Everything is red. The red soil, the red soil plaster, the red stoop polish, the basic red trusses also red, and the simply designed inside elements also red. So here again you can see the pinching of spaces and, and that drama it creates. If you show that to the client the first time, they usually run away. It's like showing a curved wall on a plan to a client. And a curved wall is the most wonderful thing to work with. Because it never, it's never as strong, and it's never as strong in reality as it is as strong on the paper. I've used it a many a time. And then we are very proud of our heritage work, preserving the old buildings and giving them new life. We have been quietly doing extensive work in your streets, Stone Bosch, and I hope it is playing a part in the regeneration of the area, new life to old buildings, and opening up the secret courtyards at the back of these buildings. We've done 101 and 103 Dog Street, that's our building that you see there, just on the right is House Lucy, and on the left is Leafus House which I haven't done anything to, but I have consulted, she has consulted me on the colour. So we don't paint white, we paint honest and white, or dorsky white. If you, if you go past the next stuff, just if you look at white, then it's not white. It's a non glare white. Then down next to House Lucy, we've done extensive work with our gratitude, also giving it new life. Vision and Focus used to be the Dove's uh, Undertaker. That was our first building in this time. And we actually, we still had those fridges things, you know, those with the drawers. <laughs> Further down, we've done Asparis, that's not Asparis anymore. And then, even further down, just to, just to the left, into on the bar and back, we've done extensive work on the four schools as well. Then one day, Pepe from the north knocks on your door and you immediately know, with this creative soul, you can push the on. Two structures around a bamboo forest. And it's a really look at the heartfelt rank that house. A floppy corrugated roof on stone walls. The house opens up completely to overlook the proposed heartfelt grassland with a city of gold in the distance. Hopefully our next <laughs> tasting will be in this space. This is on the farm fame bush just on the hill there, next to the, the angel. And they will spoil us with their capensis wines. Thank you to everybody who is part of my story. And I also get the back there because they're not allowed to sit in front. <laughs> and thank you for listening.